it's 3.14 a.m. The ICU is quiet until it's not. Code blue. A monitor screams. The nurse yells your name. Your patient's oxygen is 84, now 78, now 72. They're gasping, diaphoretic. The resident's not here yet. Everyone's looking at you. You pull back the covers. Cyanotic lips. No chest rise, no breath sounds. You call their name, no response. This isn't theoretical, it's now. You've seen the algorithm, maybe once, but this isn't a test. The patient's blue, the room is spinning, and you are the highest trained person in the room. What do you do next? Here's what's happening inside that patient right now. The airway is blocked, no air in, no air out. Without oxygen, the brain has four to six minutes before irreversible damage. The heart's starving, organs are crashing, seconds matter. You might see a sat of 70% and think, I have time. You don't. By the time the number drops, the tank is almost empty. What looks stable is already spiraling. First, they become agitated, then quiet, then pulseless. It doesn't take 10 minutes. It takes two, sometimes less. The airway fails quietly until it fails completely. And when it does, you can't chart it away. You can't outsource it. It's your moment. That's why this course starts here, because this is where everything else ends. Once you see how fast it slips away, you'll never treat the airway as someone else's job again. Every crashing patient has a story. And almost every story changes the moment the airway goes. Ask any code team what really scares them. It's not the CPR or the meds. It's the airway. Because if you lose it, you lose the whole game. That's why this course isn't about watching someone else intubate. It's about making you the one who steps in with confidence. We'll train your mindset to act fast, think clearly, and own the airway under pressure. In this first simulation, you'll walk through the entire progression, minor distress, agonal breathing, full code. You'll hit key moments where we stop and ask, what would you do now? Not later, not in theory. Now, this is how we train, one decision at a time, until your reflexes are built and your fear is gone. Let's begin. So let's walk through this together, scenario by scenario, and break it down. Let's say this patient came in a couple of hours ago with pneumonia. They were holding their oxygen okay at first, but now it's slipping. Their respiratory rate is 36. They're on a non-rebreather, and their saturation is stuck at 89%. They're breathing fast, they're scared, and the nurse turns to you and says, should we call respiratory? Now, you've got four options on the table. A. Increase the oxygen. B. Start bag valve mask ventilation. C. Call for help. D. Try to calm the patient down. Let's walk through it. If you choose A, increasing oxygen might sound logical, but they're already on maximum flow. It's not going to fix a failing airway. C. Calling for help is always smart, but if help is 5 minutes away and your patient has 60 seconds, that's not enough. D. Asking the patient to calm down might help if this were anxiety. But this isn't anxiety. This is a warning sign the body is about to crash. B. Bag valve mask ventilation is the right move here. You're not just treating a number. You're restoring airflow when the body can't do it on its own. You start bagging with good technique and the chest begins to rise just a bit. The SATs hold at 87% but the patient's effort is fading. They're no longer speaking. They're barely responding, and now their heart rate is slowing. The nurse looks at you again, more urgent this time. We're losing him. Do you want to intubate? Now it's decision time again. Here's what's on the table. A call anesthesia. B. Attempt to intubate yourself. C. Insert a supraglottic airway. D. Keep bagging and hope for the best. Let's break that down too. A. Calling anesthesia is a good idea, but they're not going to magically appear. This patient may rest before anyone gets here. D. Continuing to bag without a next step isn't enough anymore. B. Attempting to intubate might be the right move, but only if you're trained, confident, and quick because missing the tube costs precious seconds. 
But see, inserting a supraglottic airway, that's a great move. It's fast, it's effective, and it gives you more control without needing laryngoscopy right away. You do it, you get air in. Sats start to climb again. You've bought time, but the clock's still ticking. At that moment, the resident bursts in and says, can you intubate? You look down, you're already holding the laryngoscope, and now it's up to you. So one last time, what do you do? A, go for the tube. B, prep for cricothyrotomy. C, push. RSI, meds. D, step aside and let the resident take over. Let's be real. D sounds safe, but you've already been managing this airway. You're already leading. Now's not the time to step back. C, RSI can help, but only if you're fully prepared and have your gear and plan in place. B, prepping for a crick might sound extreme, but thinking ahead in a worst-case scenario is never wrong. A, going for the tube if you're trained and ready is the move. You go in. You see the cords. You pass the tube. The bag inflates. The chest rises. Sats hit 97. You just saved the airway. But if you had hesitated, if you'd waited for someone else, if you'd second-guessed what you already knew, you'd be running a code right now. This is why this course starts with this moment. Because once you experience how fast it all goes down, you'll never look at the airway the same way again. And from here on out, you'll never panic when it's your job to take control. If that scenario felt intense, good, that's exactly what it's supposed to feel like. Because airway emergencies don't give you warm-ups. They hit hard and fast. And lesson two, that's where we flip the script. You learn how to predict a difficult airway before it becomes a disaster, so you're not reacting, you're ready. But here's the thing. To access lesson two and the full crash course, all you need to do is join our YouTube channel as a member. It's quick, it's easy, and when you join, you'll unlock exclusive access to the full 11-day training right here inside YouTube. Plus, as a bonus, you'll get free membership to our website with even more simulations, practice tools, and downloadable resources. This isn't just content. It's training for people who are stepping into real emergencies. Hit that join button now and learn to intubate in just 11 days or at least get idea how to do it.